Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for attending the African Heritage Month event we have for you today. My name is Tyree Haley. I'm the Student Service Advisor, African Cultural Supports, based out of the Ivany campus. Before we get started today, I want to give some housekeeping notes. Uh, today, today's live session is, a, is accessible to everybody. I'd like to recognize uh, Brenna Darcy and Christopher Delage, uh, who you'll see them in the bottom right hand corner of your screens. Brenna, along with Christopher, will be providing uh, American Sign Language uh, English interpretation for us today, which we're very happy that we have. Um, the event also includes live captioning. To enable live captions, select captions, subtitles on in your video controls and choose the language you prefer. We want you to feel engaged, so please share any questions that you may have uh, in the moderated question and answer. Simply click show question and answer at the top of your screen and then click ask a question at the bottom. We're monitoring the chat for questions and we'll be sharing them with our panel. Include your name with your question isn't required. You can post it anonymously if that is an option for you. However, questions that we don't have time to address during the event today, we will follow up most appropriately to answer them when we can. Uh, we won't be able to reach out to uh, any questions posted anonymously though. So if you want to make sure that you get a response, just make sure you include your name. With all that being said, I would like to welcome uh, NSCC's Vice President Joe Provo to officially kick off our live event and uh, for some important words. Jill, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, Ty. Thank you. My pleasure. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you. Hello, everybody. As Ty said, my name is Jill Provo, and I'm currently in the role of Acting Vice President Academic here at Nova Scotia Community College. My home role here is as Executive Director of our Human Rights, Equity and Inclusion Department, which is dedicated to dismantling racism and all forms of oppression in working and learning environments at the college. So on behalf of NSCC, I really wish you a warm welcome to our session, as Ty said, Ask a Black Entrepreneur. But first, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Mi'kma'ki, the unceded ancestral territory and traditional homeland of the Mi'kmaq Nation. Our relationship is based on a series of peace and friendship treaties between the Mi'kmaq Nation and the Crown dating back to 1725. In Nova Scotia, we recognize that we are all treaty people. And as a treaty beneficiary, I also want to personally state the significance of this acknowledgement from my perspective as a biracial woman with lineage to the Black Nova Scotian community. I also come from the African diaspora, and I feel compelled to show my profound respect to local Indigenous and Black communities. Although there are differences, there is a deep interconnectedness, interconnectedness between the Mi'kmaq people and the historic African Nova Scotian community. Our struggles are intertwined. We share much pain from a past inflicted with racism and violence against our people. And for that reason, I do a land acknowledgement and recognition of the harms of the past, and equally as important to recognize the impact this history continues to have on us today. Divisions within and between our communities only further supports colonialism, in my opinion, and that separation means we lose voice, we lose power, and we lose access. So I therefore ask all of you here today as treaty beneficiaries to not only go back and read again and reflect on the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, but to do something, please, in solidarity, to take action. We need to ask ourselves what it means to unite and become true allies, and it most certainly requires us to do our part to break down barriers, even when that work is hard and hostile to ensure we stand together in pursuit of systemic change. We are all treaty people. And so as we move through this session, I would like us to remain cognizant of being an unceded, colonized Mi'kmaq territory, which has left Mi'kmaq people, as well as other people of color and marginalized groups, disproportionately impacted by racism, discrimination, and related trauma. So please let's keep this in mind as we work together to disrupt barriers and striving for a more equitable Nova Scotia. And let's never forget that we are better together than we are apart. 
So thank you. And so now before we officially begin our panel, I just want to say um, to everyone here that NSCC is serious about our work in fighting racism and striving for equity. This is our second annual Ask a Black Entrepreneur event, and we are committed to honoring African Heritage Month and the contributions of Black and African Nova Scotians all year round. And I'm very proud to say that we just hired Sean Smith, um, who is our inaugural senior advisor of Black Nova Scotian initiatives at NSCC. And we also just announced that Augie Jones will be the new principal at our Akerley campus. These are two very senior roles at the college. And so needless to say, this is very good news. And we also have a Black and African Nova Scotian employee resource network, a student affinity group, the African Nova Scotian flag is being flown at all of our NSCC campuses across the province right now for the first time ever. And we are about to launch a Black Community Advisory Council. There have been and will be more events organized at our campuses this month, activities hosted by our libraries, the NSCC Foundation, events led by the Student Services Advisors and African Canadian Supports Team, Please know the commitment to change is real and we will demonstrate a real seriousness to ensure that black students have the opportunity to excel here at NSCC. And just before I wrap up and hand the floor back to you, Ty, the province's theme through our eyes, the voices of African Nova Scotians focuses on the effects of anti-black racism and those African Nova Scotians who's blazed the trail for change. And this theme brings awareness of issues from our perspective as African and Black Nova Scotians and how we have overcome adversity to achieve inclu inclusion in all aspects of society. So as we prepare to move to our panel, I want to just add that we ask them to be frank about their experiences as entrepreneurs. And so after you hear about the barriers, some of the challenges and the opportunities facing our panelists, we need you to go out of your way to support Black business owners as one example of something you can do. You see, intentionally supporting Black excellence, which all of our panelists today represent, is the responsibility of us all. This is a key message we want you to take away today. We are seeking allies who want to unite in the struggle for racial justice in our college and in our province. We are all accountable. This is everyone's work. This is everyone's business. Please make it yours. Now, let's get moving. I'm gonna hand the floor back over to our host, Ty Haley who is the one who actually made this event happen today to introduce you to our wonderful guests, Janelle, Martina, and Kemi. Thank you. Wow, Jill, thank you so much for that welcome. Um, you know, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, you're, you're definitely a mentor to me in the college, definitely someone I look up to, so I really appreciate that. Um, so today we have three panelists. Uh, each will be asked and directed uh, personal questions directed for them and their journey as an entrepreneur that they can share with you and hopefully you'll be able to use their experience to, you know, start your own business. And um, yeah, so with no further, uh, with, with no further ado, I'd like to go ahead and welcome our guests. Uh, so now joining us uh, on screen, we have Janelle Clegg, uh, Martina okay. Clegg, and Kemi Smith. So um, in order, I'm gonna get each panelist to introduce themselves and maybe talk a little bit about their cultural background, their entre entrepreneurial journey so far. So uh, Janelle, you're up. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Janelle Clark, um from New Glasgow. And just to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I went to high school here in New Glasgow and played a lot of sports. Um, basketball and rugby sport has been a big influence in my life. Um, I went on to go to the community college to take recreation leadership over at the Truro campus. It was really appealing to me at that young age. Um, when I attended that program, um, it really helped me as uh, grow as a person, um, their wellness teachings. Um, just developing a healthy lifestyle. I felt like my high school didn't really teach me that. So the community college gave me a good ground to start an adult life. Um, and I really took that going forward to try and build a career in social work for myself. Um, as an entrepreneur, um, that was kind of a newer path as an adult. It wasn't really a goal. Um, it just kind of ended up being the only option for me as a person of color because every time I would join a professional workspace, I felt unsafe um, or disrespected. 
So I didn't want to have a 30 or 40 year career in a space where I didn't feel um, safe. Uh, and that's just a little bit about me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martina. There we go. I'm muting. There we go. <laughs> You'd think we'd have this figured out. I would have figured it out at this point. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Martina Kalaitis. Um, and I would describe myself as a proud African Nova Scotian uh, who is born and raised, who was born and raised in the Annapolis Valley and uh, currently residing in Halifax re Regional Municipality. Um, and I, I wouldn't have always had said that I was a proud uh, African Nova Scotian. And I say that I'm proud because um, there was a time in my life where I didn't fully understand my heritage. Uh, growing up in a predominantly uh, white community has um, led to this, um, you know, this very beautiful exploration of who I am as, as, um, as an adult. Um, so I didn't really understand my heritage. I didn't really fully understand the significance of my lineage, um, my family, uh, ancestry. Um, and so I struggled a lot as uh, I struggled around identity uh, as a black child, as a black woman. And so um, now it's just I've, I've kind of come into this new place of, you know, who am I um, and have really been reflective of of those experiences that I've had growing up um, that have brought me to where I am today as a very proud African Nova Scotian woman. Um, so I consider myself a soulpreneur, which I mean, it's not very, it's not a very common term, but I, I think for people who uh, kind of work uh, it, as an entrepreneur um, who have an attachment a, a heart attachment to their business might also identify as an, a solopreneur. So I kind of fell upon this term years ago when I thought, you know, I am an entrepreneur, I'm a businesswoman, um, but I also have based my life and my business on the foundation of living, um, you know, with my heart and soul and putting that into the work that I do. Uh, so that's brought me on this kind of roller coaster entrepreneurial journey. So I had no intention on being an entrepreneur until my 10 year career ended in burnout. And so that experience um, <clears throat> coupled with significant mental health challenges have brought me onto this entrepreneur path. And I must also say that I am an NSCC alumni. And so uh, I attended the Kings Tech College in Campville. Uh, graduated in 2007, I took the human services program and with the concentration of addictions counseling and um, really attending NSCC wasn't part of my post-secondary plan. I went to high school, I graduated from Horton High and I went to university because that's what you're supposed to do after high school. And so I did the arts, one year arts program, didn't know what I was going to do with an arts degree. Uh, my aunt who works at the Kings Tech College, Charlotte States, uh, she told me about the human services program. And so that um, that program really changed my life and it really helped me to see um, the direction in which I wanted to go in the human services program. After working in the field for several years, I did end up um, completing my degree um, with psychology through the Mount, through Mount St. Vincent, which I will also say has a great articulation agreement. So I was able to complete my degree using the credits from NSCC as well. So it's been an up and down, non-traditional kind of journey for me, which I think is always so beautiful. So I always encourage people who are trying to figure out what the next path is in post-secondary to really just allow yourself to just explore all areas. So that's me. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much, Martina, for sharing that. Uh, Kimmy, you're up. Uh, how y'all doing, everybody? My name is Kemi Smith. Uh, from the Bahamas, grew up in Florida half my life. I came to Canada about nine years ago, uh, played soccer for Dow, retired two years early in my career, and then transferred to Nascar University because I felt that I had a gift and I wanted to pursue my gift full time. I ended up graduating from Nascar University 
there was only two people of color in my graduating class, actually. So from then on, I just wanted to stand out. I ended up launching my business about five years ago, doing custom sneakers for celebrities, local people. And Nova Scotia has embraced me by storm because like I'm pretty much black like most of you guys. My wife is from here. My daughter was born here as well. So I'm pretty much a part of the Nova Scotia Afrocentric culture now. So and five years ago, business has been great and I'm happy to be here. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Kenny, for that. Um, so we're going to get into like uh, some question and answers that I have prepared for you guys, and we'll take turns uh, asking each panelist a series of questions. And, uh, you know, I just ask each panelist to just be mindful of the time and try to keep your answer within five to six minutes long. Uh, but, you know, if you have more to say, you know, I want you to share that. I don't want you to hold back. So uh, we'll start off with Janelle first. Um, my question to you, Janelle, is uh, as a former student of NSEC, what are some valuable tools that you have learned from attending NSE that has helped you run your business? Um, for me, it was a number of things. Like I mentioned in my um, intro, um, taking um, recreation leadership just gave me a foundation. I felt like I was missing from my upbringing learning the seven dimensions of wellness and applying that to my everyday life. Those things are essential for having um, a healthy lifestyle. And um, I really took that and ran with it um, and shared it with my family and they were able to grow from that information. As for my business, while I was taking um, recreation, they also offered like side courses you could do during the weekend or different times. So I signed up for a small entrepreneur workshop, um, which just taught you the basics of how to register a business, you know, the terminology used on the files and forms that you would have to fill out, um, how you do target market research. So all those little things I took from my community college um, two years. Um, everything they offered on the weekend or, you know, over and above I signed up for. Um, I just tried to absorb as much as I could from the atmosphere and the environment that the community college was offering me at that time. Um, they also offered me um, public speaking um, at African Heritage Month events. Um, and if I hadn't attempted those at that time, I wouldn't have enough confidence to join panels like this and speak publicly. Um, nobody's great at it, but I, if I didn't have any of those experiences, I probably would have turned down the invite to join in something like this. So it, at the time, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. Um, just going to introduce um, an African drum group in February. Um, but it is a big deal because those are all learning experiences. Um, it is also empowering experiences. I didn't get to attend many African Heritage Month events, but the community college offered it even back then. I graduated in 2011, so um, the community college has acknowledged the black community for some time with different events and different happenings from my experience. Um, so I take all that and, and use it um, in my everyday business happenings because when you're an entrepreneur, every day is different and the community college does its best to prepare you for that. So thank you. Amazing, such a great answer. Thank you so much to know. Uh, my next question is from Martina. Um, so you have a very unique business model. Um, what has influenced you to pursue a business model that looks at mental health and well-being and, and wanting to help people? Um, why is that so important? <laughs> That's a really big question, <laughs> but I'm going to do my best to answer it in five minutes. Um, so as I mentioned in my previous question, um, my experiences with um, my own mental health challenges, including um, depression, anxiety, and um, burnout, um, influenced me to pursue a business that models mental well-being and uh, wellness. So, 
I worked as a personal development uh, professional for 10 years, supporting um, individuals to gain employment skills to get back into the workplace. And I've always felt a calling to service, to serve other people and to work in the field of uh, social services. I, along that journey, kind of had kind of lost a sense of self-care. And I, and I, while I was, you know, supporting other people, I eventually forgot to and neglected support for myself. Over time, of course, that, that, that kind of led to um, overworking, um, you know, really just pouring out in many areas of my life. In my work as a per personal development professional, I found that um, I was kind of preaching all of the, you know, ways to take care of self and, and the importance of mental wellness and well-being. And I, I felt like a fraud. I felt like a fraud because I'm sharing this with my clients, but yet not practicing it for myself. Over time, uh, my employer recognized that uh, my my well-being was uh, de declining, and um, and so through that whole experience, I, I took time off uh, and did not return to that that job. But what I did um, realize that in that experience, that I had an opportunity to kind of bring a message forward from my positive experiences with employers who, you know, were courageous enough to have these difficult conversations with an employee um, but I wanted to also do that in my work to to hold space for employers and organizations to to bring forth these conversations in the workplace because I find they're they're, they're so important um, and it's important for me to deliver these services um, pertaining to mental health and wellness because I believe that the core of every business um, is an organization are people and our lives intersect with the many things that we're doing. And so we really need to take care of ourselves in order to serve others and to be there for others. So from my experiences with burnout, mental health challenges, came this beautiful uh, baby I call Life Out Loud Mental Health Consulting and Creatives. And so basically it's talking about the many intersections of life with one another within ourselves and with the world and how we can really um, use those experiences to promote our mental health and well-being. And so I also started a podcast called Life Out Loud Podcast, which is uh, a part of my business to really get the message out there and to normalize the conversations around mental health and wellness. Thank you. That's amazing, Martina. That's amazing. And we'll definitely ask you at the end where we can find your podcast so that people can tune in and, and hear more about, about this. Uh, Kemi, this question is for you. Um, coming to Canada as an international student, what were some challenges you faced along the path to where you are today? Uh, what did you do to overcome these challenges? Because I know there's many layers of, of, you know, not only being black, but being an international black student, you know, just to, you know, put that out there. So, uh, yeah, could you speak on that a little bit, Kemi? Uh, yeah, definitely. There are a lot of challenges, but as students, as I think, being a student is the hardest thing everyone has to grow through in their lives because like you're stuck on a limited budget as a student. You know, for example, I couldn't buy a machine for a thousand dollars and that's the same as my rent. So I think funding is definitely a hard part. But at the same time, like if you have a dream and you have a desire to do something, then you will find a way to get it done. I think that was the hardest thing. Another challenge I faced, I think, was just people believing in me because I'm not from here. At the end of the day, they always say good products sell themselves, right? You know what I mean? So if you have a good product, it will sell itself regardless. You know what I mean? Like, for example, Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the best soccer players in the world. And he's from a small village in Portugal, no one to really name. So once you put out high quality work, it will sell itself for sure. I think just like gathering support from the local community was a bit challenging for the first year. But after the second year, they part of the community embraced me as one of their own. You know what I mean? And like it's almost like I'm from here because you know my last name is Smith and I blend right in with everybody. So like you couldn't really tell I wasn't from here. So everyone just was embracing me as a student, really. So I enjoyed it. But like I think being a student is the hardest thing everyone has to go through in their lifetime. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost like a trap because like you know you work hard all summer and you can't get EI during the school year either. So just balancing finances and making smart decisions and keeping a good credit score as a student, I think that was the biggest thing. Yeah, that's very valid. That's that's definitely very valid. Um, 
My next question will go back to Martina. Um, what advice would you give a student? Or sorry, I apologize. I messed up the answers. Uh, we'll actually go to Martina. Uh, what are, in, in your opinion, what are three essential skills that you must possess to become a successful entrepreneur? That's a very good question. And also, um, I just want to start off by saying um, that if you do not go to school or you don't um, do all of these kind of studies around like starting a business and and uh, that sort of thing, you can still start a business. I just want to start with that because, as I mentioned, I I had no plans, I had no intentions, no business starting a business. And I really just started from an idea. I started from a blog. I started from uh, just really trying to learn how to kind of get this thing up and running. And so uh, I would say one of the essential skills that I um, found very valuable was continuous learning. That is something that I think is so important in everyday aspect. But learning about your industry, um, really trying to um, find out what what is what is the need of your market and with that information looking at how you can be unique within that. Now I know we're kind of on this new wave of uh, mental health and really uh, it's becoming more of a commonplace for us to have these discussions out loud and so um, for me starting out I was like okay let's 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 really look at how I can learn from what my experience has brought me and bring it into the workplace what what are the needs of the organizations that I want to kind of work with and uh, so it's, it's been super helpful in terms of my own business development and learning about your industry and just learning about what resources and skills and supports you need um, is also really helpful with increasing adaptability skills because that is another <laughs> element that I struggled with is wanting to have full control over every thing and when you're an entrepreneur you've got to shift you've got to duck you've got to kind of jump over that you've got to get over that barrier and really you know not allow kind of these adversities or, or barriers or when people say no to you in your business to, to allow that to define you know the value of your business. I've had to keep going in the face of no's and just keep telling myself, you know what? A no means not now or a no means this isn't the right opportunity. And so I've had to really learn how to adapt and shift. And I think most people know that over the last two years that we've been shifting left, right and center in this pandemic. So that's that's been really key. Um, I would also say time management and um, everyone can still hear me, right? That just fell out. Yeah, OK. Um, time management, setting boundaries is another big one. Because I've been in this kind of burnout cycle and in recovery, um, setting boundaries is super, super important. Learning um, what is your capacity, learning how to say no, too, is 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 a big part of that. Because as a business owner, you want to sometimes take on every opportunity. And I've had to really <laughs> with my with the support of my therapist and life coach learned how to to set those boundaries around my business work if i'm working from home you know the time to end is the time to end i'm not taking calls i'm not doing all these things because eventually it leads to you know continuous burnout um so setting boundaries for yourself which includes time management which includes you know knowing what it is exactly that you want to pursue knowing as an entrepreneur that not every opportunity is for you uh, is also very very important uh, but there's a ton of skills and and i think it's important to recognize that we don't have to have them fully developed before we start the business a lot of the things that i wanted to do before starting i wanted to perfect everything and nothing's going to be perfect as a business owner you just have to just jump in hold the vision and trust the process. <laughs> so in a roundabout way, those are some of the, the, the things that I find are essential in uh, business development. Thank you. Very well said, very well said. Um, so I'm going to ask the next question to Kemi, and I know Kemi, you have a lot of experience with this particular question. 
What advice would you give a student who's studying full time, uh, but is also working towards uh, starting up a small business on the side? Uh, my advice would be a student working full time is just believe in yourself and you need to figure out the difference between your job and your work. I was trained as a barber, I was trained as a designer, I was trained as like an architect and I did my degree. But like, that was my job, but my work at nighttime is being a sneaker designer and making cool shoes for people. So once you figure out what you wanna do, set a small plan, set small realistic goals, and just keep believing in yourself and figure out what you're passionate about. You know, I, my mother was a principal, so she bleed education into me. She woke me up 6 a.m. every day to study math. So like I was never passionate about school, but I was passionate about sneakers and design. So figure out what you're passionate about and just set small goals and everything in life takes time. You're not going to achieve what you want to achieve in the first year. The first year is just keeping your doors open and building your name and then growing slowly. And I've been five years in so far and right now, like I'm getting a contract to design some shoes for the World Cup coming in. I, and I wasn't thinking about doing that five years ago, right? So start small and keep going, I'd say, and give it a chance. Thank you so much for that, Kim. That's a uh, really good point. Um, so my next question is for Janelle. Um, Janelle, why is it so important to consider the environment when conducting your business practices? And what are some ways that you do this? Um, I'm 32 and the way I grew up was acknowledging um, global warming and different environmental issues we have in this day and age. I personally think if you're going to start a business, this has to be built in somewhat um, as a part of your business. Um, for us, we we have a global view. I like to look to different countries, different continents and see what trends are over there. When you look at Obviously, you look at Africa, our connection there as African Nova Scotians. There's many different countries, many different things going on. But a lot of textile waste for us is shipped back over to um, underdeveloped countries. Um, and consciously fast fashion here um, is sold and um, starting a clothing business and doing market research, all this was also a part of my research. Um, not only looking for who would be interested in my products as an African Nova Scotian creator, but how can we also connect our shop to a global, like, not message, but a, it's the connection, because we have a connection as people globally and for me I have a connection to African Nova Scotian heritage so if they're getting our waste I want to help prevent that I want to step in and say I see this happening you you wore your shirt for a week and now it's being shipped in a, in a container across seas um, and sitting in a landfill and someone else's beautiful country um, so as an entrepreneur uh, I in in clothing textile because that's what we do here. I feel obligated to bring that information and education to the everyday consumer um, because they don't have the time or they're just not aware. If people are aware, they move differently. Um, so for us to be producing clothing, um, it's very important to consider where the clothing come from and where it ends up, not just the sale. Thank you. Yeah, I love that answer. And um, yeah, this is totally really cool what you're doing because I think that your business is really authentic in its own way. And it, it's so nice that you're, you know, you're taking other consideration, not just like your profits, but you're taking in the world consideration because obviously global warming is a big thing. Uh, that you know some people are, are not acknowledging so it's really good that you're able to do that so uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, Martina uh, can you speak on the importance of networking and collaborating with other black businesses and what are some other black businesses you've worked with in the past? Mm -hmm. uh, it is truly valuable. Um, networking has really uh, expanded my business in ways that I hadn't planned um, 
you know, within the black community and outside of the black community, just really trying to uh, connect myself with many different people. Um, so networks, network contacts often will refer my business as it creates new opportunities. And so, um, you know, considering, you know, some of the challenges, the barriers, the adversities uh, that are experienced by black business owners in particularly, uh, I think it's really important that uh, we share resources that help support, uh, elevate black businesses uh, in our local community. And, and uh, I've just, I've had such a, uh, I guess I would say like a, a, a warm welcome, you know, in my business for someone who, I, and I don't know, I have this kind of idea of a business owner having, you know, all of these kind of imprints in different arenas. And I had nothing like I just started as someone with an idea, not just I started with an idea and I really wanted to bring um, what my vision was to the communities to, to help um increase the conversations around mental health and especially within the black community um growing up in my family we didn't often talk about mental health challenges it wasn't something that was you know um brought forth or maybe you know we weren't comfortable with having those conversations and i think there is a stigma certainly within the black community in itself and so being a black business owner in the field of mental health and a woman um, you know, I've been well received and supported uh, to continue doing the work within my community. I've had uh, some great success with uh, collaborating with other black business owners in the area. Um, one uh, in particular is Solar Productions, which is uh, kind of my newest collaboration, which has also brought me on to this new career as, a, as an artist, as an actress and model. Uh, so working with Soli Productions, uh, agent Salitha Short, who is really on this huge movement and um, in elevating and amplifying um, diversity within the in industry, which is so important. Um, so that experience working with her has really given me the opportunity to collaborate, uh, build my brand with other um, brands I've worked with designers uh, in the fashion industry, Trev Clothing, for example, uh, Michonette Fashions, um, and through my own business, I've worked with some amazing creators. Um, one in particular, uh, you may know her on Instagram as Marika Star, a fabulous and amazing um, talent artist. Uh, so we've had conversations on the Life of Lab podcast about the value and importance of art and how that can really support our mental health and well-being. And so uh, it, I think it's really it's really cool to to kind of look around at all the different black businesses, especially within our local communities and see like what are the opportunities that exist to collaborate and to really bring forth something that is really special and really unique because I, I never really kind of I didn't have this as a plan starting out. Um, but through these collaborations, we've really put together some really cool um, uh, productions and had some really great conversations. Thank you. Yes, and, and, and for those who attended the event last year, uh, Salitha was actually one of the panelists that we had on last year. So it's really cool that, you know, we have those connections. But uh, thank you for that, Martina. I think it's so important to collaborate uh, with other black businesses because, you know, someone might have information that you might be looking for and you won't know until you ask. So I feel like we're all stronger when we come together and, and, and support each other. Uh, thank you for that. Janelle, you're next. The question I have for you is um, there's a lot of great resources out there to help black businesses and promote empowerment, such as the BBI, Businesses Jamming, Delmore Buddy Day Learning Institute, Black Educators Association, just to name a few. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, what resources have you used to help propel your business and um, and how did they help? Um, with, they haven't really, they've helped my business, they're aware of my business, they like my products, they share my products, all of these entities. Um, 
But where we're in Pictou County, it's a it's kind of a smaller town. I do find for my business to access these entities, it's more difficult. Growing up, though, I will say they had a heavier influence on my childhood by hosting um, entrepreneur March break day camps, which I love attending as a child. Um, uh, Del Warren Buddy Day um, hosted a numerous amount of programs that I attended as a student. Um, I can't thank them enough for putting me in a room with all black people for the first time. Um, so their influence has been over my entire educational career, um, but not so much as my business. Um, my business is still relatively new. We're in our second year of a brick and mortar one. Uh, I think we're only six months online. Um, so um, in the future, I know they're available. Um, and I know they're more than willing to connect with me. So just having that subconsciously in the back of my mind as an entrepreneur does give me peace of mind. And it did help structure me into an entrepreneur, which wasn't my goal. Um, but um, without those little programs and little windows of their influence throughout my childhood, I might not be here today. So thank you. Yeah, so so you would say earlier on in, as, a, as a child and a teenager, those organizations kind of help, you know, keep that idea of entrepreneurship fresh and knowing that you have supports. But it's just now that you're just starting to start up again with your business, um, you know, there could be an opportunity for to maybe connect with them and, and to like uh, strengthen that relationship. Very good. Thank you for answering yeah. that. Um, so, Kemi, uh, my question to you, and uh, this is actually the last question that I have formally, and then we'll go into some questions that uh, you, the viewers at home, have submitted into the entrepreneurs, which is really good, and I'm excited to get into those questions. Uh, Kemi, where would you like to see your business in three to five years down the road? Uh, right now, you know, I try to take it one at a time, but as of right now, uh, me and the crew are focused on YouTube. We're close to being... Um, monetize on YouTube. You know how inflation is. Everything's going up in Halifax except people's salaries. So YouTube has no inflation. So I've been focused on getting monetized on my YouTube channel. Also, me and the crew are focused on getting a storefront, aka a flagship store. Everyone wants to see my work in person. You know what I mean? Like everyone hits me up all day. Like everyone wants to see the shoes. Like this is made out of denim and lambskin. So everyone wants to see it in person. So I can't meet people every single day. So definitely want a flagship store coming up working on that but you know our rent is in Halifax right now so and just create my own studio space I want to give back I want to teach young black men how to sew I want to teach young black men how to cut hair I want to give back to the community in the way I have a center for myself I can teach people every day I think that's the biggest thing is giving back to my community because everyone has embraced me here so well and just taking my uh just taking my creative juices full-time I think I think my mom has pressured me to do my master's degree but you know, we'll see about that so just focusing on those kind of things and being a dad, really, you know, my daughter's birthday is tomorrow. Just incorporating her and letting her believe in herself that it's possible if her dad can do it and just growing the business piece by piece. You know, I just ha I just signed a major deal with Crep Protect, so I get free stuff from Crep Protect. I don't know if you guys use it on your sneakers, but just the small things in life and just growing the business and becoming a good father and building my community at the same time. I think that's the goal for the next five years. And I feel with you two, we can really make that happen. And we can document that and give it back to the community in that way, I think. I love that, Kemi. And uh, I noticed that because you, uh, your business, you you uh, touch so many different areas. You know, you're an artist where you can draw, but you also do things on sneakers. You're a barber. Uh, you got some architectural experience. So I feel like you you have uh, so much to offer in different areas, but they're all kind of correlated to to each other. So that's really cool. Um, so yeah, Thanks so, so that's much. It. Yeah, no problem, my brother. Uh, so that's the final question for the formal part. Part We're going to go into asking uh, each entrepreneur individual questions submitted by you guys, the viewers at home. Um, so again, please email or send in the questions and we will go through and ask them. Uh, so one of the questions that was submitted is from Martina. Um, Martina, what was the biggest hurdle to, to grow your podcast and getting your message seen? Um, someone is interested in starting and becoming a content creator 
uh, they would love to to get a little bit of your insight and experience for that. And uh, no cap on the time, so take take your time answering that. My gosh, if if I could give someone a dollar for every time I had to unmute, <laughs> someone else would be rich. <laughs> um, so yes, the biggest hurdle for me, two things. One would be that I allowed perfection to stop me from producing and moving forward. So I wanted to do this podcast thing all on my own. I wanted to um, know how to record from home. I wanted to learn how to edit. I spent way too much time trying to do all these things that really I have no skills or business even trying to do. It was taking away from other work that, you know, I needed to, <laughs> to do in my business. Um, so that was that was one thing. I came up with a plan and I eventually decided that I would use um, a production company to help produce my podcast, which is the best thing that I could have ever done. It's also a business expense. So <laughs> I know it's hard for people. I mean, you can start a podcast just by recording on your phone. I just don't have the tech capabilities to do all the other stuff, nor do I have the time. So um, I've hired out someone to do that part for me so i go into studio and then i just record and i meet with people and i have conversations i have vulnerable open conversations about people's journeys and their stories the other thing i would um also say is that fear was another big hurdle for me in not getting started i don't know what it is about that fear aspect and just recording because even in studio I was sweating it wasn't live I don't know it, it was just a lot for me but I think at the end of the day when I kind of did a, this exploration of why am I feeling so scared no one's sitting in here looking at me it's that the message behind it because Life Out Loud podcast really is a vulnerable podcast it's about me telling the world essentially some of the struggles that I have the challenges that I have and um, I think it kind of speaks to this whole life of perceived, per protect, perceived perfection that I was living before. And now with me being open and honest about a lot of my struggles, now I'm kind of showing the world something different. And so um, if you go to my podcast in the first season, um, you will hear that it has taken a long time for me to get to where I am today my first podcast my first episode in season one is titled doing it scared so um yeah I, I i would say those two are the biggest things for me that kind of delayed the process in starting um but if if you want to reach out to me on instagram i can certainly um i welcome any conversations about getting started and can certainly provide more resources and supports um that I have to share. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Martina. And uh, I, th I think you you raise a really good point. Um, you know, putting yourself out there to be vulnerable to share your experiences so that other people can learn from it. I think that that is something that uh, can't go underestimated because a lot of people are are you know they protect you know what their experiences are and what they've gone through because they don't want to kind of relive that trauma. But I feel like you know those strong people who are able to kind of, you know, put their feelings aside and really express what they've gone through to help other people. I think that that's really rewarding. So uh, we'll definitely get you to put your podcast in the chat uh, uh, after. Uh, and next Thank submitted you. question that I have uh, is for you, Janelle. Um, how do you keep up your business and how do you keep your energy and, and, and positive mindset during times that we're living through right now with the pandemic? Uh, that is a challenge for everybody. I'm sure it is. And I can't act like I don't have my down days. But being a creator, that's what you're here for is to kind of break that monotony and be that light. So for me as a creator, when someone comes in and gifts me what they deem is undesirable, 
Um, I see it as a gift, so it gives it new life right away. And not knowing what's in that bag and then creating a happy image or an empowering image um, for marginalized communities out of that unwanted textile, for me, just gives it such a full story. First of all, the textile was unwanted. The imagery on the textile is deemed, you know, well, it's hard to get. We don't have a lot of black creators or stores you can walk in and see imagery that looks like yourself of mixed culture, because I'm of mixed culture. I have children of mixed culture. They go to school and um, they're all exposed to one type of imagery. So with our shop, we like to break that monotony and, and be positive um, with streetwear, with the culture in mind, with the upcycling in mind. So it's full circle. Um, and with all those aspects, how could you be upset and how could you be down when you have literally the whole rainbow at your fingertips to imagine and create with? And that's the message we want to give to the community like my shop is for me out of necessity i grew up in extreme poverty um it was hard for me to find feminine clothes i had all brothers and handy downs and um so remodeling textile was something out of necessity it's so it's part of my soul entrepreneur journey which i'm going to now take that turn because i thought it was fitting for um my business as well you just end up in the situation where creating light is the goal every day thank you I love it. Creating light is the goal every day. That is, uh, that's very powerful. I'm going to have to write that one down. Um, my next question is for you, Kemi. Um, did you have any mentors or any real support during your journey? Is there anybody that you kind of looked up to and, and kind of helped you along your journey as an entrepreneur? Uh, I wish I had some mentors like that, man. It's just through trial and error, but I have a, I have a, a uh, mentor in the States, his name is Devlin Carter. He owns one of the largest black owned uh, independent clothing brands called SIA. It's called Somewhere in America. He designs for all the NBA players. Uh, he designs for a lot of like local people and uh, his own uh, custom shoe line as well. So he's one of the people that reached out to me. I tagged him in a post and he's like, man, you're hard. Uh, do you have a mentor? So he was pretty much my mentor. He lives in LA right now. And so he's been mentoring me as a black designer, I'd say. Uh, my wife has been a big support system. You know, the barbershop itself where I work, the barbershop is the place of truth. They tell you if it's whack, if it's good or not, right? So to the friends, family, everyone around me, I think has been a mentor. I mean, you yourself has been a mentor in my life, another black man holding it down and being a good friend to me. And you'd always tell me, you know, this is whack, this sucks, and just small things like that, the community itself and the streets as well the streets always tell you if it's good or not and if your name is bumping in the streets i mean the product's pretty hot right so i think it's just the small things like that but i wish i could have a mentor in halifax if you have one i can mention me i'd be really appreciative of that right because i mean it's hard to have a mentor because there's no one that ever has ever been doing this before right it hasn't been like a block architect graphic designer slash barber doing this before right so i think that would definitely help me going forward you know if you have any please let me know for sure, for sure. And you hear that viewers. So if you know any anybody that you think that would be a great mentor for Kemi, please, uh, please share that. And I uh, appreciate all the nice things you say, Kemi, because for sure, like as a, as a fellow a brother, I, you know, I look up to you and I, I like your, you know, your enthusiasm and, I, and I, you're definitely a hustler. So uh, good job. Uh, my next question is, is for Martina. Um, so Martina, can you share some of the innovation processes you've gone through to get where you are? Innovation. Oh, process. innovation. <laughs> I feel like this is innovation. Obviously, it's a continuous thing. It's a continuous cycle. But I would say for where I'm at right now in my business, um, the biggest innovation process would be to really allow myself to lean into 
the art of creating. When I started my business, I had this grand idea that I would do corporate trading. That was kind of like my last gig that I did, like in my career, I did a lot of training. Um, I, I taught mental health first aid and, and some other courses. And so when I started my own business, I think it was just kind of this natural evolution of doing training for my business. It seemed easy and, and, and organic in a sense. I then started to realize that the goal of, you know, starting this business and doing customized training and um, I'll tell you a secret, I guess everyone's going to know, but <laughs> the, the thing for me when I realized that I needed to remove some of the services that I was offering, I was trying to do too much for one. Um, I think, I, I think Kimi, Kimi, was it you who said something about starting small and then <laughs> being consistent and growing right so I didn't get that message starting out I wanted to do everything big and large and do try and fill all of these gaps because when you're working in mental health there's a lot of different areas where you can certainly put yourself in and, and you know grow and thrive however I didn't start small and I didn't start consistent in that regard so when I was doing all of these trainings and I was offering customized training I did a workplace scan with um, a potential client where I was going to go in and, and create all of these courses and, and, and really just help provide mental health, employee psychological health in their workplace. When I was doing this scan, I realized I, I had this feeling of, man, I hope I don't get this job. Like, I hope they don't call me back. I hope they just kind of forget about me and and we move on because I just felt overwhelmed and I felt like, you know what, this doesn't make me happy anymore. It's not, I don't think this is fulfilling me. And that was a flag and I needed to listen because at the end of the day, when I say I'm a soulpreneur, I mean that whatever it is that I feel led to do has to be done in the business. I can't fake it anymore. I did that for 10 years, which led to burnout. So now as an entrepreneur, I get to decide what work activities and business activities are fulfilling, are meaningful and intentional for me. And so I then made that decision that I would no longer offer customized training because it was way too much work. I didn't have the time, the mental capacity to do it. And so I've scaled back and I've gotten back to the heart of why I'm showing up and I think as entrepreneurs we often ask ourselves why am I in business that why is the center of why we do what we do right um and so getting back to it I love speaking I love doing the podcast I love storytelling and so this year actually I've just recently made a shift where I'm basically pausing on all the training and I'm only focusing on keynote speaking at the podcast and then storytelling through my artistry as as an actress and and model and it, it feels good it feels good within me and I and that's why I've always I always tell people um, who ask questions about business development you know hold that vision and trust the process because that process even though it wasn't kind of linear it's not supposed to be linear by the way but it told me what it is that I wanted to do. It showed me where I wanted to go in my business. And it's a, it's a continuous evolution of business development. Like I said, it's, it, we flow through what fulfills us and what we need. Um, because if, we're, if we don't feel like we're doing something that is meaningful, how are we going to produce and, and put that back into our communities and into our business? And so I'm, I'm always about that. And that's, that's why I said the adaptability is so important because before I would fight it, I would, you know, try and refuse anything that is not what was in the business plan blueprint. You got to shift, you got to adapt and, and go with your gut. You, you, you would know. So um, figure out what it is that you really want to do and what is your why and go with it. Thanks. Wow, Martina, it was uh, very powerful. I think that there was so much good information just from that question alone. I think that, you know, starting off with why, I feel like that's where everybody should start. Everybody has, you know, a past. Everybody has things that, you know, motivate them and keep them going. And, you know, I definitely can relate to you. I remember, you know, 
starting off and, and trying to put myself out there in so many different avenues and, and, and really burning myself out. And then it's not until you really sit down and say, OK, like, I don't like doing this. So why am I doing this? You know, I, I would do this for free. So maybe this is where I should be going to. So I really think like less is more in a way. And when you really uh, focus and narrow in on what it is you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it, I think that that's so important. So very, very good, good, uh, good answer. Um, my next one is for you, Janelle. Um, what are you what are you working on right now? Is there any big plans that you have coming up? Like what's your big project or idea uh, related to your business that is uh, coming up? Um, right now we are looking to do kind of like an endangered animal image line. So we had a number of National Geographic's donated to us because everything's digital. Um, and growing up, you know, that little yellow logo, everybody kind of recognizes here in Nova Scotia, like National Geographic's. Um, and we're going to look up local animals that are endangered. Um, we're going to try and only print those on upcycled textiles. Um, and then we want to communicate to the community, you know, appropriate actions they could take maybe in their backyard to help feed the birds or help these endangered species. So kind of give them an activity with the garment they might purchase here at the shop. Yeah, thanks. Awesome, that, that, that does sound very exciting. Um, so what I'm gonna get into now is I'm going to ask each panelist one final question. And when you answer the question, I'm going to get you to um, Tell the audience and the viewers at home where they can find you, where they can, you know, on social media, uh, you know, uh, website, wherever uh, they can find you. I, I'll get you to, to, to share that. So um, I'm going to start with you, actually, Kemi. Um, if you could answer this question, um, how do you define success and where can we find and learn more about uh, creations by Kemi? I think success is defined about, uh, I think, yeah, I think success is more defined about hitting your small achievements. And at the end of the day, is all what you want out of life. You know, like the law of attraction, not everyone's going to own a house, not everyone's going to have a car. You know, some people will take the bus, but I think success is more defined about what you want out of life and more so what you want from achieving your goals. You know, you hit those small milestones, those milestones in your life. I think it will all go according to plan. Like, I think one of my small goals was to do a shoes for Buddy Heel in the NBA, and I did that, right? So just small things like that. Uh, you could find me on YouTube, Creations by Kemi. Uh, you could find me on www.etsy.com slash Creations by Kemi. I don't have the Spotify website anymore. Those fees were bleeding me too much. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Creations by Kemi. Same thing on Facebook. And uh, you can email me at shoes at creationsbykemi.com if you have any questions. I'll try to respond to you as quickly as possible. And thank you once again for having me. Pleasure meeting you, Martina, Janelle, everyone. And thank you once again for having me. Thank you so much, Kemi. So uh, yeah, make sure you go check out Kemi's uh, YouTube page because he's uh, he's definitely putting some really good content on there. And uh, yeah, big things to come for Kemi. Uh, so Martina, I'm going to go over to you. Um, how would you define success and where can people find you? Well, um, I think before starting a business, I would define success by very hard measures, financial measures. Um, but now I've had a change of heart and I've realized that success was, is showing up. For me, success is showing up. It's showing up um, each and every day, doing the best that I can. It means showing up consistently doing the things that really fulfill me. Um, and I think just organically through that process, uh, I've been able to build this business and and find success through making connections with people through, um, you know, success when I, you know, share an episode that is very super vulnerable and someone reaches out to me privately and says, you know what, your message really resonated with me or I'm too struggling with, you know this x y and z and it's just nice to know that some someone else is out there you know so to me success now means so many different things and it's not just about 
you know, the financial means or, 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 you know, some of the traditional standards of success that we oftentimes see in society. So that's, uh, that's, that's, that's my answer <laughs> and it works for me. And, you know, I just, I am kind of in this place where I'm simplifying everything. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, underscore Martina dot official underscore, uh, you'll learn that I've just merged my business accounts all into one page. I've gotten rid of a Facebook, one of my Facebook accounts and I'm in the process of redoing my whole website. So right now you can find me at lifeoutloud.ca. Um, but like I said, that's going to be changing this year and uh, I'm simplifying doing things smaller and doing things in, in a bigger way through that. So those are the two places that I would say are the best places to reach me. And I just wanted to say thank you to you, Ty, uh, to the college and um, to you, Janelle and, and Kemi. It's really nice to meet you and just to hear your stories and to feel to be a part of this. And I think this is very special and I think it's really important um, to, to share and to, to connect in the way that we did today. So thank you. Thank you so much, Martina. Uh, Janelle, how would you define success and where can people find you in your business? Um, success has also changed what it looks like for me um, now in my later adult life. Um, before, as a student in high school, I defined success as, you know, attending university, buying the house, getting married at a certain age and having your children like all in a certain order, a certain time length, you know, as an athlete in these circles, that's what you're promoted to take on as this roadmap. But for me, coming from extreme poverty, but also being in these elite athlete circles, you, you know, I got to see a little bit of both um worlds and having to always pretend in one world um showed me that success is just being your authentic self and those around you that accept that that's success um so for me having the space where i don't have to hide where i don't have to straighten my hair where i don't have to speak a certain way that's success to me um because i chameleon well but it's exhausting I don't want to have to chameleon to make money to feed my kids. I don't want my kids to think they have to chameleon to live uh, a full life because that is not the way it has to be. Um, even in a small town, uh, we're in a small area. We have a brick and mortar. We don't get a lot of bodies into it. So we kind of have the opposite problem where we're trying to launch online um to meet the customers that want us in bigger urban areas so success to me is being a, your authentic self in every space you enter which is impossible for some people so i do not take that for granted um, as an entrepreneur thank you for having me as a speaker um i kind of get to work with my nose down and um forget that you know there's a lot more going on in our black communities and um, showing youth and showing other people who might be in professional settings struggling. Um, I think this is very needed, very needed. So it's nice to meet you, Martina. Nice to meet you, Kemi. Kemi, we, we got to connect like creators. I do not create shoes, but uh, I would love to make the, this fly outfit together. So I'm going to be in touch with you. Um, so thank you, Ty, for inviting me. And I just appreciate everybody's time today. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, so now we're just going to, just for, for people still on the call, we're going to just talk about some resources that we have here at NSEC for students um, and alumni. So I'm just going to get a uh, slide put up. So. Uh, there's a startup acceleration program um, that is a three, uh, 30 week program where it's a certificate of professional skills. So that is, um, you know, you develop your skills in professional networks that you need to launch your business. So it's a very good opportunity for um, alumni to, to take advantage of getting in enrolled in this course. I think that, you know, it will definitely set you up for success because you'll learn how to, um, you know, fund your business. Um, you'll learn how to 
get resources and community connections to to promote your business. Um, so there's a lot of great things. And 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 basically the the message I want to get across to everybody is that you know there's so many resources out there to help and support you. Um, you just need to worry about your why and, and and what it is that really pushes you and motivates you to want to give back and and make sure that your your why is bigger than your purpose you know because that's what's really going to propel you uh, through those challenging times you know um so i think that that's very important um to, to consider um that's pretty much it for me um i just want to thank each and every entrepreneur uh that is here today for this second annual ask a black entrepreneur um, i can't thank you enough uh, for being part of this to share your experiences your stories on behalf of nsec our students, our faculty, our alumni and management. Truly, thank you so much. Um, I also want to thank everybody who came together to put this event together. Um, there were so many players uh, that, that were able to make this event be successful. Um, the IT team, marketing, communications, entrepreneurship, alumni. Um, if I forgot you, I'm sorry, um, but thank you for everybody for tuning in. We thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to fill out the survey that's going to be in the chat. There will be a chance to win a surprise um, package uh, that will most likely include some of these wonderful products from these entrepreneurs that we have. Uh, and, and make sure that you put your contact information so that we can contact uh, the winners of that. And um, without further ado, uh, thank you guys so much for attending the second annual Ask a Black Entrepreneur. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. And uh, thank you all so much and uh, take care.